The first step I need to do is get the radio out of the dash real quick and see what's behind there to make sure that little amplifier isn't there. To get this radio out, pull out the gear shifter, reach underneath, take a small panel tool, gently pry this loose, unplug all your switches from down below. There's two screws here holding the radio in place, but really what I need to see is if there's an amplifier in here and there isn't, that's great. We don't, we don't get it. The radio is out, there's no amplifier located behind it. This one is a newer model, which we can tell from the plug that they're using from the factory. The speaker wires, like we were saying at the beginning, these are going to the little thingy mock speaker pods. And this is feeding the mono amplifiers in the trunk. We won't be using this anymore, but we will be using this. Fernando starts getting the roadkill treatment on the front doors to dampen those up. I also need to make the tweeter pods so that we can put our new tweeters in those locations. This is the little sail panel pod. We need to get this speaker out. Two torque screws. And this is what we're trying to get to. We need to make a panel that'll take it from this speaker. Focal tweeter does come out of this. If you want to get down to the actual raw tweeter, you can. This is a metal, so don't touch it and make sure there's no screws around if you do take the top off because they will stick right to it and destroy the cone of the speaker. I strongly recommend leaving it in the case until it is time to go into the car if you are going to be removing it. Those have little teeth on here that you line the tweeter up with. 
and then twist. Inside the box, it does come with two angle mounts, a whole bunch of screws, and these guys. These are the crossovers for both of the sets of speakers. This small set here is for the tweeters. This bigger set here is for the mid-range. Instead of coming with a big passive crossover or even a small passive crossover, they've broken them out into their individual pieces. It makes installation easier. Why this is helpful? In this case, both speakers are located on the door, so that's easy. But if you had a tweeter on, let's say, the A pillar inside of the car in the door and you had a big passive crossover, you have to figure out some way to wire that up so that you'll get to both of those. That usually involves running new wiring of some kind. When you go with something like this, it has all that built into it. Since we're at this point, let's take a look at the mid-range that we're gonna be using. This is the factory five by seven inch woofer. You notice it has a bigger magnet than what you're probably used to seeing from a factory speaker. It's actually got a lot of extra work that has gone into it. Ford doesn't make speakers like this anymore for sure. This was definitely something that, well, it's kind of an anomaly. Definitely impressive. If you've ever heard one of these with those four five by sevens, you got a decent amount of bass out of it. What we'll be replacing it with is this Focal here. Comes with a cover over it so you don't do any damage until you're ready to put it in. It has a treated cloth cone, butyl rubber surround, mica dust cap, flip it over, you have a vented pole piece. These little rubber pieces here that say Focal, those are part of the dampening for this metal. It's They're there to absorb some of the vibration you might get in the basket. When you compare the magnets, our new magnet is still bigger than this factory subwoofer. These are their factory upgrade. If you're looking to put this in off of deck power, you can do that. If you're looking to amplify them, you can do that. It doesn't take a lot of power to get these things to get up and dance. You don't need a 120 watt amp or a 200 watt amp. You're fine with something between, let's say, 35 to 100 watts of power, as well as you can go down to that 18 watts from your radio and still get good sound out of these. Obviously, the more power you get them, the better they will sound. To design this, there's two ways we could do it, depending on what kind of tools you have around. The first way you could make a mount for this is to get something like some blown PVC, some ABS. Screw your speaker into place. Sometimes the nubs will stick up here. Sand them down. Head over to your router. This is a double bearing spiral cut flush trim that we get from Mobile Solutions. Adjust your height. You want the bearings to ride on the side of the speaker here. And you'll end up with an exact copy of the speaker. Your screw holes are already there because you use those to screw in the speaker to the plastic. All you really need to do is typically drill them out a little bit bigger. And then you have to cut your tweeter size out. That can be done by picking up the Mobile Solutions Smart Circle System. This has a ton of different size holes for making tweeter cutouts, and you're essentially gonna do the same thing. You're gonna figure out which hole you need, tape this here using your template tape that you can get from Mobile Solutions, and you're golden. You'll have an exact copy of this speaker that you can then make another copy of and put on the other side. And if you only have two to do, or you have limited tools, that's a great way to do it. We've done it like that for years. However, we have the Glowforge laser. We have the third guy. What that means is we're gonna scan this speaker in and do it that way. From now on, if we need to do this, all I have to do is hit print, it'll cut them out. Makes things a tad bit easier. Granted, there is a little bit more upfront time because I have to design the speaker into the software so that we can print it. The first step is putting it on a flatbed scanner so that we can scan the shape into our computer. On an Apple computer, they have a factory program called Image Capture. That application is designed to be used with anything that has image capabilities such as a scanner or a camera. That way you don't have to download any weird software. You can select the area around the image you're trying to scan so you don't end up with a huge file. Launch the Amadine design software. Drop our shape into the middle of the page. Name your layer so you can keep track of everything. I create a new layer. I call that outline. What we need to do first is find the size of this so that we can design our speaker in the right proportions. To do that we'll measure this circle here in the center. We're also done with a flatbed scanner so we can put this away. With our calipers zeroed out, we have a 2.7 inch circle. Coming back over to the computer, grab our circle template, hold down the shift key and draw a circle. Turn on the stroke, undo the fill, come up to the top, make sure that the joined icon is on, then type in the right size. 
2.724. Select our move tool, click on it. Since the scan is black, make this easy to see. I'm gonna pick orange, move this into place, drag and drop this until we get it to be the right size. We're almost there. That looks about correct. Next, we'll grab our square with rounded corners. Turn off the fill. We'll cut off the portion of this that we don't need. And after some fine tweaking and adjusting, we end up with the shape that we're looking for. Lastly, we need to drop in the circles for the holes. Coming back over to the speaker, we can measure the size that they are. Move those into place. Command C and V gets us a copy of that. And this gives us the basic shape that we're going for. This would be what we just routed out. We have to add in the center for the tweeter. To do that, we're gonna create another circle that was the same size as this. Select a new layer, call it tweeter hole. Change the color. I make all the paths that I'm going to be turning off before print. I like to make them out of blue. The reason why we're doing this is we want to add some crosshairs. This will give us our center. Grab our new Focal Tweeter, measure how big we need it to be. We can repurpose our path circle here because we have it centered. If we just change our measurements, we'll go directly into the center of where it was, change our color from blue to orange so we know not to delete it. And there we go. We now have a version of the speaker that we can cut out on the laser. At this point, if you want to add any logos or anything like that to this, you can check the scale. Not much room in the way that we can add a logo. Granted, the laser can go super small. This does say Focal on it. However, we could put a little tiny five-star logo there if we wanted. Create a new layer and call it logo. The reason why you want to do that is because sometimes when you drop artwork onto the application, it bogs the whole thing down. Sometimes if you add it in too quick, it's easier just to figure out where it goes, turn it off, finish your drawing, and then turn it back on. And that's it. We can export it out now and get it over to the laser. Let's take a look and see how she fits. With the Focal tweeters, they don't give you any mounting options for the backside or bracing. It just has these little teeth on it here, which as you can hear as I'm pushing this off or snapping into place, which is what we wanted. We can turn it to get it into the right viewing. We made this out of eighth inch so that it closely represents factory. Our screw holes line up. This guy's done. We can get him mounted into place. And I can get him off to Fernando. This is what it looks like. Definitely a lot sexier than this old beat up speaker in there and it's gonna sound way better too.